Life is tough, but it doesn't necessarily have to be as tough as we make it. You know, our perceptions are extremely important. When bad things happen, like for example this morning, I just got an astronomical water bill and I don't know why. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is horrible. Uh, so, you know, you interrupt your day, you gotta go see if there's any leaks somewhere, you gotta figure out what the issue is. Uh, those little frustrations in life can add up really quick. You know, you want to take your kids out to get something to eat. And all of a sudden, uh, for four people, it, it's $100 uh, for fast food, which you shouldn't be eating in the first place. But thank you all for joining me. We here at the Mystics of Texas, we talk about a lot of these things and how to deal with them. Because life is just not easy. But with some focus, with a little time and attention and patience, we can make our lives better. And many of you have probably been in really bad situations where you have felt like you were totally beaten down and you ultimately figured out how to get out of that situation. That same thing applies and we have to remember that that same thing applies now. Like how did you get out of previous jams? When I like to use the one about money because most of us in our lifetimes have had some sort of money crunch and it just wears on you. All of a sudden you can't really connect with other people because that's all you're thinking about. You're like, God, how am I going to pay this uh, car note without it getting repossessed? Uh, how am I going to pay for my kids to eat? How, how am I going to get, you know, my, all these monetary issues, uh, everybody most everybody has had that some form of it anyway and sometimes there are just no easy solutions you know sometimes your job just doesn't allow you to keep up with inflation it doesn't allow you to uh, have the lifestyle that you want uh, it's easy to get behind you're juggling bills from month to month all these things but as long as you're not elderly in age there are a lot of ways to get out of financial jams but it takes time it takes work you know you can see online and uh, all these different places people selling you on the idea that oh you can get rich doing this or that or you know maybe so maybe some of those are legitimate uh, most of them are probably most likely scams but even the ones that work they're, they're not easy. You have to dedicate your time, your attention. Uh, you have to go up and down in the pitfalls of all those things. And that is part of life's journey, right? That's why it's so important to have uh, what we're building here in the Piney Woods of East Texas, building a, a community of people where we gather on Sundays and uh, often during the week, you know, Regardless, we get together. We have to build trusting, reliable friendships. Not friendships where you want to join a group so you can just take, 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 and you know everybody gives, gives to you. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, groups where we can help each other with solid, practical advice to, hey, I'm in this particular jam. How do I get out of it? What do I focus my thoughts on so it doesn't ruin my day? So it doesn't interfere as much with the relationships that I really care about. Because it's real easy, as we all know, to get in a foul mood of stress and anxiety and then instantly uh, be standoffish to our loved ones. And then what does that do? You know, I mean, you, for certainly you, have had, and me, have had some relationship that we care about and they act indifferent or they're short with us or whatever. It's uh, th those, those things happen. So our moods and how we are interpreting our problems have a direct impact on our relationships. So in turn, if we start throwing that cycle of distance and closing off and negativity, well, it instantly comes right back to us in forms that we don't like. So if we can practice the art of 
catching ourselves and going, oh man, I am really stressed out about this situation and I'm getting over excited, over anxious. I'm taking it out, ignoring or pushing people away or separating myself from the people that can really help me. Well, we're making the problem worse. We're making the problem worse, it, it, which is totally unnecessary. Even though the problem may not be solved in one hour, in one day, in one week, it may not be solved within a year. We live in this society where we think everything needs to be instant, instant, instant. Well, life just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't. You can't force things. You have to realize, okay, well, I'm in this particular problem and I may not solve it today. I may start formulating a plan to get out of the problem, which may take a month, may take six months, may take five years, whatever it is. We just have to be cognizant that nothing happens overnight. That's difficult for a lot of people and that creates a lot more anxiety, a lot more fear, a lot more emotional damage in relationships, which are all unnecessary. We create most of our problems ourselves. We, as a nation, do not create, um, well, the 99% of us do not create the inflation. Uh, we do not create ongoing wars and conflicts and, and all these other major big things. But in our individual life, the things that we control, we typically make it worse on ourselves in a lot of cases where if we can practice the art of understanding ourselves, because so, we have to forgive ourselves, right? Like if we're always beating ourselves up and always uh, find ourselves in these funky moods, just say, hey, okay, like me earlier, hey, you got this $2,000 water bill and you're like, where it's normally about 150 bucks. Like, oh my God, what happened? Uh, well, instead of getting stressed out, just start finding a solution. So, okay, what's that coming from? How do I fix it? You know, what, what am I going to do to, uh, you know, all, all the all the things that go along with that. Instead of spazzing out and then getting a high level of frustration that when the people that I love come, come home in a couple of hours, I'm not distancing myself from them because I want to... Uh, show off that I have an emotional problem. You know, I'm, I'm going to act this way thinking that I'm going to get some sort of uh, sympathy or recognition or uh, feel sorry for me or any of the things that don't make any sense because that doesn't make any sense. Nobody wants to be around a whiny baby. Nobody wants to be around, oh, woe is me. Nobody wants to be around somebody that is not actively trying uh, to make as many situations better as possible. So in this life, we need each other. Even though um, I continuously hear this a lot and it's um, frustrating, is that I don't like people. People are stupid. Yeah. All, all these the negative toning comments that most people are responsible for saying, uh, including me. I've, I've gotten frustrated countless times and said, oh, damn, people are so stupid. Uh, but then with some practice, you catch yourself and you go, ah, okay, maybe I'm the stupid one for uh, insinuating that because some people just haven't had access to the information or they didn't um, know that that information even existed to find out or um, they didn't know that there were certain mythologies on how to meditate and connect to nature and uh, build better relationships so their life is in uh, just a cluster and they haven't had the guidance or um, the right people in their lives, the right mentors, the right uh, parents, they, you know, all of the different things that happen in life. So if we can practice the art of listening to ourselves, hey, hey, you're getting really upset. Take a step back. What am I getting upset about? How can I fix it? And realize that nothing gets fixed overnight, typically. Yeah, I mean, unless it's a water leak, you can go fix that, right? But if, you, uh, uh, if you're in a bad monetary situation, sometimes it takes a while to get over that. Sometimes it takes a while to either get the right education to get uh, a career that you desire, 
or to start a business that takes time and effort and money and challenges. Yeah, all of these things take time and they all take work. So to get out of our fear and get out of our anxiety, it requires work too. It's not just handed on you on a silver platter. Well, oh, let me manifest you know, all these things. Well, manifestation also requires you to take action. Like you have to, you know, set those intentions, meditate, ask the universe. All of those things are vital for sure. But it also requires you to make the plans, you to take the steps, you to catch yourself whenever you're creating distance with people you love because you have uh, external things happening in your life that are causing an imbalance inside of you that boom, go out to other people that cycle back. That is one of those things that uh, on the path towards enlightenment, on the path towards self-awareness that we have to catch because life is hard. But it doesn't have to be as hard as we make it. If we can practice that, if we can practice, hey, all right, take a deep breath, connect with the infinite, connect with the friends that you make, good quality, solid friends. And people are going to come and go in our lives, that's for sure. People are going to use us. People are going to uh, say things that we're not. Although that's just, that's okay. But along that path, you're going to find people that you can trust and care about. And as long as we are maintaining those relationships, uh, life does get better. And that is one of the things that we do out here and focus on heavily is that we need each other in order to make life not so bad. We have to constantly work on ourselves, constantly work to maintain and build reliable, trustworthy, strong relationships, care about each other, spend some time with each other, do the things necessary that increase the richness and value of our individual life. That's what's so important. And it's not all that easy. Sometimes it's easy to forget. I mean, it requires habit. It requires constant thinking. Leave yourself notes. Um, uh, definitely write in a journal. I just happened to stumble across a YouTube uh, video this morning that was making fun of people that write in journals. <laughs> and I just thought that was hilarious. You know, like the, the panacea to solving all your problems is to manifest it and write it down in a journal and then no poof, you're all wonderful. Ha ha, that's a joke. Uh, that sort of, he was making fun of it. Well, I've been writing in a journal for the majority of my life, and I can tell you that it is phenomenal. And it's a difficult practice because it requires you to sit down and spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes, however long you want, thinking. Like, okay, what am I going to write about? What am I going to manifest? How am I going to write down the plan to make my life better? How am I going to hold myself accountable? How am I going to do these things? Like, it is a, it's not easy either. It's not easy. I mean, it's easy to say, oh, just go get a journal and write all everything down. Well, everything's easy to say, but not everything is easy to do without regularly practicing, cognitively thinking about it, reminding yourself, remember, just remembering you know, the things that we need to do, the mindsets, how to practice lowering our anxiety to focus on what we need. To know that, hey, it's okay if I can't solve my money problems today. I realize that, but I'm taking it one step at a time. Just baby steps and I'm walking in the right direction so I can relax and I can give the love and receive the love from others that we all need. And I hope this, if anybody's out there contemplating these things and, and you actually need or I think everybody needs a spiritual home, uh, no matter what your religious beliefs here, if you are interested in those things, if you're interested in talking about and discovering topics that help you understand yourself better, how to deal with your anxieties, your fears, how to uh, understand and recognize all these external forces around us that have a direct impact on our spirit, our soul, then this is a great place to come if you're in the local area. We're right on the Louisiana and Texas border. And also, as you can see, to connect with nature. Bring your family out here. 
families do it all the time. Come out here and have picnics. Come out here and utilize the games, the tennis courts, pickleball, the game rooms, all, all these things to fellowship and build relationships so we can connect to nature. We can connect to each other and we can ultimately connect to the divine, the source of all things in our own individual way, but with our with our group as well so that we can meditate together and build a life that we desire that is more rich and crosses in the tapestries of life. Uh, also, I wasn't planning on doing this. Uh, on the Mystics of Texas, that's our website, mysticsoftexas.com. If you go to uh, our shop, there's you know, you, just as all websites, you have like a menu button of all the uh, different pages. Well, we have a shop there and me and a fantastic uh, spiritual guide, his name's Gil. Go check it out. Go there and uh, you can support our work by you know, buying those courses. They are highly valuable and they should be just a lot of money, <laughs> but they're not. They're very affordable and I think they really help. So if you have an interest in that uh, and you have an interest in what we're doing, you can support us that way. Um, and find your own spiritual group. Find people that help you grow in self-knowledge worldly knowledge, spiritual knowledge, and elevate your life to where you want it to be because we ultimately are the captains of our own ship. And with that, I hope you all have a fantastic day. And um, by the time this comes out, it will be Sunday morning. So in a couple of hours, we're having a crawfish boil. And this crawfish boil is open to everybody. It's free. And... It's going to be right after our normal service. That's just fantastic, wonderful presentation this coming Sunday. And the food's free, and it's great. And it's a wonderful way for us to hang out afterwards, fellowship. And uh, a lot of us also go to either outside or our dojo, depending on the weather, to do fantastic meditation, if you're interested in that. It calms the soul. It helps set your intentions. It helps make this world and your journey through life much better. So thanks for joining me, and I appreciate you joining me, and I hope that you come out and see us. Thanks.